Hello! Welcome back to the Banner Saga. Let's get ready for battle. With the crazy captain of the army, I guess. Okay, we are pretty much surrounded. I don't want you to be this and... I'll try my best not to make her... Not to make her shoot anyone. a lot of damage and one two two archers okay cannot get close well least I can do is go like this of course and yeah, we'll go like this and use bloody flail. Ah, so close! For free? Oh, I forgot about this guy. Uh, you can thread the needle, hits all units. No, you're gonna. I'm not gonna make her hurt anyone. I promise that. Uh, he should be fine. Okay. Mm. I don't think she can hit her. Well, we can try for him. Wait. Uh, we're enough arrows, maybe? No! Really? Wait, I don't get that range. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, okay. Just after. That's actually fine. Well, he's, go he's gonna get hit from this guy down here. Yep. That was an overkill. Don't touch the girl! Wait. Oh. Apparently he can Oh, maybe they cannot shoot because they are adjacent. Oh, he's full on everything. I didn't see that. Yeah, they cannot hit adjacent units. Is the biggest. Oh, okay. Oh, we can do this. You've got to be kidding! Everything went. <sighs> okay, I can nearly kill him. I can kill him.
Just shoot her. Attack her, but I'll give you. God damn it! Sometimes it's so annoying with the prompt. Appears it's something so hard to get rid of it. Yay! Nice. I know it could've been better. Hate to admit the truth, but you're right, we can't stay here. If we're not murdered in our sleep, it's only a matter of time before the dredge find their way in. There's nobody defending these walls. You spot Alec looking at one of the fags. She cocks her head to the side. Well, that I think is still alive. Ivor lifts him to his feet by his tunic. He groans from the pain. Why did Akil try to kill us? He's the lunatic. Figure that yet? Why would Frostveller's chieftain put a madman in charge of his guards? That what he told you? He never put Akil in charge. As soon as those gates were shut, Eki walked into the Great Hall and sliced open the chieftain like a narwhal. So it myself, Eki wasn't a captain. Look at him. He was playing us. Yep. Can't say I'm too surprised. The whole place is a death trap. Where can we go? By now the dredge have already flooded the south, I'm sure. Realm Toe is the only thing that makes sense. Across the ways, I might know someone who, there who can help us. And the dredge probably won't follow us over into the ways. They didn't in the Great Wars. Because it's a death sentence? Food's already running low. I know where Ekel keeps his supplies, I'll tell you. If you take me with you. If you take, yeah, if you take, well, uh, what's the catch? No catch. I want out of here as much as you do. Just never had anywhere to go. I'm not the only one. Get the supplies, and there are plenty of fighters who are desperate to get out of here. That might solve a few problems. Uh, it's worth the risk. If nothing else. Ekil is going to feel it when his food suddenly vanishes. What's your name? Onef. Why do you... Just wanted to know whose face I'm going to break if things go wrong. Yeah. Ever is not one to screw around. Let's see, supplies are over there, but I wanna see market. One break, plus two will, plus one strength. Let's get some... Well, green one gets one, oh my god. Okay, that's 12 days. Sure. Let's see, someone can get promoted. I remember that. Whoa, Eva is already... Rank 4. Let's go for that. And what was that? Uh, break is the amount of direct damage you can naturally do to an enemy's armor. Mm, so let's go with that. Um, anyone else? Not really. I will swap a lead with him. And I'm fairly sure that's all we can. Let's go for the spice. Onef leads you to an inconspicuous building. This is them, he says to a handful of guards inside, uh, who lower their weapons. In a concealed basement you find an enormous store of food and sundries. Grab what you can. Mm, take what you can destroy the rest. Nah, I'm not a monster. Take what you can and get out. 
The entire store of goods uh, would take a long time together. You have each person in the caravan make a pass through and take what they can. Before too long, Onif has led you out of the city with his trusted fighters. You prepare to leave the city behind. 80, that's a lot. Okay, so well, let's leave right off the bat. Outside the walls, things are a mess. Dredge are everywhere. Fortunately, they're going around the hill on which Frostfell sit sits, heading south, and sh show little interest in following you as you cross into the wastes. You're finally free of Frostvale, but find yourself facing new problems. You hope that whoever Ivor knows as Wormtoe is willing to help. Wait! Just now it shows that we can tie talk to all. Why? Why did that? And we'll need to camp, probably. Once the morale hits low, I guess. A gaunt man and woman approaching approach the caravan, hands held high. A word, friends, the man says. We are poor farmers, though on our luck, the woman hits him and says. We are outlaws, plain and simple. Ten of us and we'll help you uh, in a fight for some food up front. What are your crimes? Misunderstanding, the man says. Meat houses are confusing. Never know when you've drank your share. Don't hit him again and says, We've stolen, killed a few when we had to. Skills that might benefit you out here. Okay, but you'll be watched. The two quickly shuffled to a supply wagon as eight more bandits emerged from the wilderness. They gorged themselves on salted fish and cheese, taking time to thank everyone. After eating, they politely keep to themselves. Oh, they didn't eat a whole lot. The caravan is buzzing with worry. In the distance, someone has spotted a large number of dark figures following you. The dredge cries one woman, but something about it tells you they don't quite look like dredge. Gods be damned, jokes Onef, standing on one of the cars to get a bit of you. Worse than dredge, that's a kill. The news spread throughout the cans, men like wildfire. A kill? Why would he? Thus, Odleaf, unless he's after you, Onef. He's insane, interjects Onef, and unpredictable. There's a good number of fighters with him. Your mind races considering what to do. Mm. Need a charge keeping him away from the caravan, yeah. I think that's it. You gather all of your allies and fighters and head out into the wastes, weapons draw, where the caravan won't be involved. Rook, my good friend, he says as you approach, throwing his axe on the ground. We come to parley, not fight. Why would I believe a word you say? Rook, we are good friends. What happened? You tried to kill us. Just go back to Frostvell and leave us alone. <laughs> Rook is a pretty girl. I'm glad nothing happened to her. With the trash, I mean. My friends, how could I forget everything you've done to me? Broke into my city, took my warriors, took my food, took one of my best men. How are you, Onef? Do they treat you well? Shove it up your ass, I kill. If you came out here to kill me, let's get it over with. Nothing like that. You must think you know me, or people like me. What did Olive tell you? I'm crazy? I haven't survived because I'm crazy. I did what had to be done to make it in a frost well. The only mistake I made was you. What kind of man are you, Rook? You look like an average man to me. A man worried about his daughter, maybe, just making his way. But then look behind you. How many people is that? They follow you, fight for you. Why? What kind of men are you? Uh, I'm doing my best like everyone else. We're all doing our best. Why are they really there? Why do they look all look up to you? Why do these people think you are? You saved them. You're a hero. Maybe that's more important than who you really are. What's your point, Akil? 
I am your prisoner, Rook. Bind my hands. First veil is done. I can survive there thanks to you, my old friends. You may not have cut my throat, but you sentenced us to death. I don't believe that's who you are. Is this some kind of an apology? You can't trust me, I know that. Take me and my men as prisoners, if that's what it takes. Eki looks down at the ground and the words come slowly to him. I'm not above begging. Uh, okay, Aleph? I'd be a hypocrite if I told you to leave them. I don't know Rook, you don't know me, how could you trust my word any more than his? And behind whatever decision you make, that was utterly useless. Let him join strict terms. We need fighters. We we'll fight the dread just like the rest of us. We we'll fight for everyone now, not just yourselves. And if you even look the wrong way at a single man, woman or child in this caravan, there will be no hesitation about killing you on the spot. You do us great honor, then I had so poor. These people are right to follow you. You have no trouble from us. I may be reckless, but I pay my debts. The caravan eyes them suspiciously, but they try to fit in, following your orders. You expect to hear complaints about this. Things are definitely becoming complicated. I really shouldn't be bringing every stray I find. We need to rest a bit. Yay, we can talk to him. Just take it easy for a while, people are noticing. Oh, they notice, haven't they? We are on the edge of dying daily and you want me to take it easy? Gods, I should have... I should be plowing twice as many fields, you understand? Don't get us thrown out of this caravan, Mogun. It just... it's not just you who suffers. Right, so you get married, have kids, the one I'm supposed to settle down to? What happened to... Two brothers clam up as you approach. That's right, I've got a kid to take care of. Cool your head, Mogun. Hogun the parts of Mogun looking awkward. Rook, what brings you around? Uh, sorry, it was none of my business. No, but it's no secret. I like women, Rook. They like me. They like the scar. <laughs> Forget it. Listen, all this, all this death. Every night, half the caravan cries itself to sleep. Pathetic. Come on, Rook, be honest. This is good living. Half the world just tiling soil till they ki kill over. What kind of life is that? We're lucky. You could go your whole life with no goals, no purpose, nothing to fight against but boredom and hunger. I'm glad for all of this. I'm not sure I agree. Look at it like this, we're fighting to the death almost every day, yeah? You can curl up in a little ball of fear, you can go high in the woods eating nuts and appreciating leaves or some nonsense, or you can enjoy the struggle, know which one I pick. Anyway, just so you know, I'll never go for a let, promise you that, or at least, all yours. Appreciate it, Morgan. You depart, unsure whether your opinion of Morgan changed for the better or worse. I can see the struggle. Okay, let's rest. Let's rest one more day. And let's leave. You find a surprising number of people camped out at the Godstone. They've been here quite a while, ever since the sun stopped. Apparently they think Radomir, the sun god, has come back and they're worshipping him despite the bleak environment. They welcome the caravan, mingling and swapping stories with the others while they rest. They have almost nothing of value to trade, but their leader approaches and offers to let you join in their tribute. And what it involves? Golden fair, the one says, showing you a golden liquid in a silver bowl. 
He places some on his chest, which almost sounds like it's sizzling and explains her clan Jing Fing is a gift from the sun god and all of the bonsai to sun and lets them see things clearly. Uh, let's see if anyone is interested. Not surprisingly, you find no takers. You wonder how the world you be to, to go in for it yourself. Yeah, that seems pretty good stuff. Nobody can really agree on what Rather Mirror looked like, as fond as he was of his own isolation. He never directly contacted humanity. Most think he was a serpent that lived in the sun, and it's not uncommon to hear speak of seeing the tail of a great creature slipping through the thin clouds on a sunny day. Rather Mirror was always one of the lucky gods, the kind who people thank for good weather, healthy livestock, and a good harvest. Despite all that, the biggest mystery has always been how his godstone came to be found at the bottom of a tried out lake. After some rest, you continue on. The sun god worshippers are keen to stay, so pack your things and return to the road. Several people have noticed black vultures circling about the car above the caravan, taking advantage of the light snowfall. They pose no threat, but they have a visible impact on the mood of your clansmen. The next time you look back, Oddleaf is firing arrows into the air, which nearly attacked the birds once or twice. Get lost! No dead down here! She shouts to nobody in particular. Join her. First person to knock one of this out the sky gets their wish granted, she announced. Several of the caravan gave it a try, including Alette, enjoying the sport and turning around morale. It's no big surprise when one of the Olive's blue feathered arrows bring down a bird. You know, says Olive scanning the caravan, a lot of these women, they could do this. You can tell from the look in her eyes she's excited about the idea. I think I'm going to start training them how to fight, she says. Sure. We can always use more fighters, you tell Oddleaf. If Alette is any proof, you know how to train someone with a bow. Oddleaf gives you a smile. She heads off to some of the women in the caravan, showing them the vulture she shot down. An old man sits astride an overgrown portion of the trail. You lost? you ask. He adjusts the leather strap on his head and says, No. Are you? He jumps up and shuffles toward the caravan, his tattered clothes revealing no weapons. Well, I've seen better, the old man says, peering into the supply wagons. But I'll join you. He stands next to a fighter foe, throws his beard over his shoulder and puffs up his chest. The fighter grins and the stranger exhales, asking, what are we waiting for? Lead the way! Who are you? <laughs> Call me Yunnar or anything else you like, the old man says. A man goes where he pleases, doesn't he? His stern look is more comical than intimidating, but you stop looking for answers. Okay, if we can keep up the pace. Keep pace? The old man puffs through his mustache. No fitter than old Unnar. And husband, mind your wives. I'm cursed with the golden tongue, not silver. The caravan enjoys a good laugh as they start moving once again. But we need to get some food. Well, we have 13 days worth of, worth of food, so I think we should be fine. I hope. Well, there's some forest. Harsh words from one mother to another draw the attention of the entire caravan. Caravan. My daughter marries Ragnin or no one. That red fin tramp you call daughter won't provide sons. The insulted mother bears her teeth ready to attack. Explain yourself. Ragni chooses my daughter on his own, the insulted mother says. But this one thinks I have something to do with it. Launching forward, the first woman flies wildly, shouting, Liar! 
The wounds are separated and eventually calm down, but you worry that this is far from over. At least it doesn't didn't lower our morale. Wormclaw was never the kind of place someone would build a town. Fittingly, the Var living here aren't known for welcoming visitors with open arms. The Varl find you before you see them. Not surprising with this many people behind you. With weapons drawn, they demand to know what, why you're here, but back down when Ivar tells them he's come to see someone named Krummer. Well, I'll be damned. Krum, it's been a long time. Yeah, it has. So what brings Ingvar to Rimto with his very own village of humans? Bad news. The Reds are coming down from the north. We barely made it this far. That is dire news. Come on, we have food. We'll, we'll discuss more in the meat house. As you follow the old Varl into their meager town, you catch him quietly saying, if it were anyone else. I've talked with the warriors here, I'll be honest with you. Half want to go north and find out what happened at Bloodsbalk. Something we should go to Grothheim instead. None of them are happy you're here. What do you think? If I had it my way, I'd stay here and let the dredge come. But you made us a problem, didn't you? We can't feed this many people for long, even if, he, if they don't eat much. This is a viral town. Most of us take care of ourselves. You've got women, children. You could pitch in, make this place livable. It doesn't work like that. These viral are here to get away from civilization, not make one. It's crumb school. I won't be long before Dredge are here too. No, it won't. If there's one thing we should do, it's tell Jorund that what's going on. Who's Jorund? Varl King. Well, as close to one as we have. Ingvar, where do you find these people? Stay here and rest, but once you re you're re are ready to go, we do. I'm going to see of those who want to head north. But I'll join you to Grafheim. More travel? No, we've already come so far. Stop the pouting, girly. Even if your own won't listen to a tired old Val like me, I have a feeling they'll pay attention to you as friend Ingvar here. They'll listen to Ivar? <laughs> he hasn't told you? Of course he hasn't. What do you need to... Do what you need to, but don't belong. Okay, we can talk with that guy. We can rest. Well, we will rest. Let's visit the market. One Reno gets four. Let's go to twenty. Yeah. Don't break minus one agra. Hmm. Really yeah, like something like on a for higher level level. Kroon, can you spare a moment? Mostly no, but I'll try it. I've never had a moment to thank you for your hospitality. Consider it done, then. How did you get all this far to follow you? Respect, young one. After the Second Great War, wasn't much for me left to do, so I started training older Val to fight. Got tired of that, made a place in Wormto. They still come calling, even with no wars to speak of. Seems like that might be changing though, don't it? Who is Ingvar? <laughs> I'm not surprised he never told you. I'm just surprised he can stand me around anyone at all. Your friend was one of us long ago. I mean, the dredge bashing type. He was called Ingvar then. And if you want to know why he changed his name, best ask him yourself. I'm too old to peddle in gossip. I bet you have some incredible stories. I might. I might. Or I could be the most boring Varl you ever met. Depends on how much you like killing Dredge. Ask me again someday. Might tell you about the time we filled a dead ox with whale teeth. And why. Any wisdom on fighting Dredge? Depends on how much you know. They're all armor. 
tap them hard enough though and it will shatter. Line up a whole row of slag and they'll explode on each other all the way down. You get in a big brawl, half your time is spent setting them up for it. And if you see one bang his axe like a tuning fork, try to kill him quick. Sometimes the slag he's growing won't even show up. I best leave you to your business. I suppose you should. Take care, friend of Ingvar. Okay, but that's gonna be it. Thank you very much. Stay alive and see you soon. Bye!